Hello, and welcome to another open source web development live code hangout. We'll be working on the Western Friend website today. We've got a pull request in progress. Oh, it's really geared to this issue where we're trying to import content from a Drupal website into Wagtail CMS. These uh, document pages have PDF attachments. You can see the data here. It's a CSV file that I've exported from a Drupal website. So far, I've got all of the fields defined in the model. I'm calling it a meeting document. There's a uh, title field, the date of publication, the original Drupal node ID so we can perform deduping, the related entity that's publishing this document, document categories here has an enum, a body with some minimal HTML in this case, and a media URL, which is a link to a file that we will need to download and save to the local web application environment and a, an original URL path so that we can create redirects. So the data structure is in place. Now we're gonna move on to an importer. Previously, I've written an importer for a similar feature, document importer. And we're basically gonna use this code almost, uh, almost verbatim. I think in this case, rather than using Copilot too much, I will just copy and paste, use the previous session and read through the code and make changes. Need to create a new import, import board document, import meeting documents. Most of these will be the same. This function is mapping, reverse mapping, basically. Uh, in our Drupal website, we're storing things in the human readable text form. In our Wagtail Django website, we have them in an enum with human readable form. Then I need to grab this internal representation. Suppose the internal representation could have been the same as the human readable form, but uh, I like the convention of uh, lowercase and using underscores. So I guess that's kebab case. Is that kebab case? Or remember. Epistle, epistle. Minute of concern. Maps to minute. And. Didn't get quite. Photos, maps to photos. And there's no fourth category in this case, so I'll just take that out. And known category label. All right, so that's all I needed there. So this helper function is gonna reverse map uh, the data from the spreadsheet into the desired value to store in the database. What we're doing here and if we couldn't find one i'm just letting myself know using print i should log these out but print is okay in the short term meeting documents so i'm keeping the same function signature and grabbing the index page which is basically a folder you could think of it as a folder in a 
filing cabinet, getting the root size document. we will use later I didn't have to be so verbose with some of these identifiers But it helps to understand what's going on. These comments are also useful from my understanding and using my chat GPT. These are actually my chat G, uh, Google Copilot prompt. Let me double check here. Might be incorrect in the other code as well. Um, no, no, meeting document type. Documents created here won't have. Oh, uh, I see. So, okay, that's why that worked. Shouldn't be doing this. Get rid of that. I believe it's a mistake. Create a temporary instance and then attach the field we run this but sure all right we'll just add. I'll read this through one more time. Too many squiggles. All right, so back to the top. Grabbing the file, grabbing the index page so that we can put the, each of the documents underneath the index page.
Yeah, so we're reading the CSV in. I'd like to move away from pandas. Uh, I'm using it right now because it's able to handle HTTP and file system paths uh, transparently, or in other words, it doesn't, it figures it out for me. Uh, but I'm thinking about moving towards a model of only loading these CSVs from a file system and having a pre-processing uh, step that will pull any of them down from an HTTP location if I pass that in as the initial argument to the overall importer. Hey, welcome to the chat. Working on a migration, content migration for a Django project. Let me know if you've got any questions or suggestions. Okay, so first, you know, checking if it exists. We're using this node idea. This is our deduplicating logic. Each of these rows should have only one or have a unique identifier. Getting in the right collection. Comment is correct. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create a new one. And I don't need to do the category here. I guess we're going to do that on the next line, but pop, pop the initial fields on there that are invariant. That always will have a title, publication date, and this uh, ID. Then it's always going to have a category. All of these are categorized, but we needed to get that reverse match. Meeting document key. Document type key. Ah, yes. So this field is wrong. Uh, I should have the model open. Model is document type. Yeah. I don't have a consistent interface there. But it is consistent with the data. It could be category epistle. I'll leave it alone for now. These little inconsistencies though can come back and bite you. And when I use consistent interfaces, then the code is much more portable and reusable. Almost, you know, you can copy and paste and have a working thing without having to think too much or make unnecessary errors, unforced errors. So then we're gonna parse the body. Uh, not all of these have a, um, anything in the body, but there it is. And then we're gonna parse the media not all these have something in the media, but most of them do. Yes, yeah, so I think this is ready to run. And the redirect. Okay, so here's how this works. So we're gonna into the app directory, open this shell. Let's see what do we have? Any unsaved changes? Nope, just uncommitted changes. Uh, let's see if there's any dependency changes. I don't think there were. All right, and run. Uh, so my database backend. We're using Postgres here. Uh, so we have I've dockerized the Postgres instance so that I don't have to figure out how to install it locally or other developers don't have to really twiddle too much with that knob. We've got a Postgres container with Postgres um, management UI, PG admin. Colim is just a Docker UI alternative. I think it's lighter weight, uh, but right now it's starting up the sort of Docker daemon. I mentioned previously I want to work with a daemonless Docker approach to see if I can just run Docker Compose up and have it run at this step. But I haven't gotten to that. Once I start the Colima daemon though, we're going to be able to run Docker Compose up.
and we'll run in the background. And then I can run server and uh, basically that'll allow us to log in and browse in the local host. There we are. And I'm able to log into the Wagtail admin. Um, so I've, I've built the data model and the uh, importer, but I don't have a management, I just remember, I don't have a management uh, interface. So let me get that management interface real quick. This is just gonna be copy and paste because these are very boilerplate. So in our documents app, let me think here. Actually, in the community app, I've got the program divided into applications. It's the way Django Architect its projects. And in the app, we define admin menu. It just so happens that this community app is pulling in and uh, managing many different content models. So we're going to define one here public do board document admin model and we'll name this next one this meeting document document admin model and since the interface is the same the search fields and everything should just work I just need to this meeting doc model there and we should be good to go and then if i refresh the page this is performance checks oh yeah i need to run these migrations but let's go ahead and refresh this real quick it should work without the migrations running community uh no no it won't because it can't oh no uh one more step. <laughs> now if I refresh. meeting documents so yeah and here's where it's not going to be able to do that because I haven't run these migrations so let's go ahead and run the migrations make sure I didn't omit any migration detected we'll read, uh, refresh the page after running the server and yes I need to create the meeting document index page I should add that to my import script as well, scaffold initial content. Uh, right now, I will just create it in the site root. Oh, welcome page is our basic home page. And I'll create a child page. Hmm. So yeah, a couple more odds and ends to tie up. So in order to be able to create this meeting document, I need to modify the home model. You're able to 
by default create any content anywhere in the wagtail page hierarchy but i've been increasing the strictness so we keep our content or well organized where possible so if i go to the home model the home page all of these are inheriting from wagtail page which is what's giving us this um, hierarchy and if i allow meeting there we go we're getting a little bit of help from the uh co-pilot and once performance checks we should be good to go oh i thought it was a, all right there we go meeting document index page so i'll just call this meeting documents and we will publish this this is all wagtail auto generating all of this stuff it's pretty cool and while i'm here i'm going to edit this scaffold initial content and remind myself to create a meeting document Looks good. This is all copilot at for me, so that's helpful. This scaffold initial content basically, when I start a new instance of the site, I can just bring up the skeletal structure. We know there's some certain sections. Uh, that way, I don't have to recreate those, and then the other content can live underneath those. So now that I've got a meeting document page that I created manually as well as in the scaffolding for later. Now I can go here and it will allow me to add a meeting document. I'm not going to create one, but just so you can see the structure required fields. And let me double check here. Oops. This should just let us select the meetings and do I have the meeting imported? I haven't run the, the importer apparently. Let me check community meetings yeah okay so i'll have to run a, another importer this is depending since there's relations in our data these are actually foreign key ids i have to run an importer before i can run this importer so i'm not able to do that in this stream unfortunately i have to stop short here but uh i'll commit these trust that they'll work i'll set up the importer later and come back to it probably in another day or so uh, let me go ahead and just make these commits and push up here to github and we'll see them appear in this pull request I'll paste the post pull request in the chat in case anybody is interested following along all right so see any changes to models what did i do here Here's the change, so. Keeping these commits somewhat granular, uh, I find that has been useful at times when I need to revert a particular commit and some work, but not lose all of the work. 
Uh, it's not likely that I would revert that type of a commit, but there's been times where I've mixed in, for example, some kind of formatting or code maintenance commit into a feature branch and uh, realized that the maintenance uh, was a mistake or something like that and needed to roll that back. For example, in type, adding uh, type checks or removing type, uh, type ignores, one particular that I did recently. Uh, we'll just commit this. this is sort of a lint level, but uh, uh, I don't know. We're using the import document, the field directly there instead of from the sort of the class instance. Initial, and I believe you know. I'm probably 80 or 90 percent sure that this is correct, but I need it's dependent on another importer that needs to run in sequence. So I'm going to composite these all together as like one importing chain. But right now I'm working at the leaf nodes of these importers, getting the individual ones to work. And then I'll go open, uh, create a level of abstraction, probably based around the uh, site sections, the site section importers to work. Then there's interdependencies between site sections, so I'll come up on a level of abstraction and probably just do the whole site importer in the correct sequence. Right now, I just kind of keep that in my head and do it manually. It's also contingent on one level of abstract uh, pre, it would be a pre uh, processing step again to get the data into the local directory, local working environment from an HTTP source. Right now, I'm doing that manually as well. One step at a time. Ooh, I just saw that typo. So that was that was uh, uh, done by Copilot. It's a good helper. But this is an example of where Copilot is not going to be able to replace a good uh, sort of uh, replace the software developer, developer, good or not, <laughs> an aside. But um, you're going to have to review the code. And I'm not necessarily saying I'm a good software developer, but having this diff view. Um, certainly <laughs> puts me in a different mindset and um, more detail oriented in a way uh, in the diff view. I'm looking for mistakes more acutely because uh, that's the job of a reviewer to kind of sanity check the code and things like that. When you're coding it, you're still trying to look for mistakes, but you're also juggling syntax and um, code architecture and things like that. It's a little slightly different mindset. And I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, Get that other this name the um, prime who has articulated this point better than me okay so scaffolding initial content i just need to run back here but it was a good it was an interesting observation that code review is a different mindset and i'm reviewing my own code so it's giving me the opportunity to to wear different hats here scaffolding initial content if i just open the file here all right so this actually needs to be meeting if I do that, we should get uh... see if I can if I have the model name correct, then it can import for me. But this is just a language server error. That um, because my repo, my local repo is in a subdirectory, the source is in a subdirectory called app, uh, the language server keeps on prepending app. That's not correct. I don't know how to tell it not to do that. It's probably a, a setting I'm just overlooking there. Okay, so uh, I didn't review, I mean, I read through the importer code. Um, there may be an, a, like a low level error such as that. Meeting document index page, meeting documents, meeting documents index page, meeting plural.
mixing singular and plural, but trying to keep an eye for consistency as well. Document, document edit, yeah. That big video. Okay, so I'll push these up and we'll call it good for today. I don't think I'll have time later this afternoon. We're for perspective, this project has been under development uh, since for five years. <laughs> we thought, oh yeah, we can just write, uh, we can rebuild a, a, this complex Drupal website in a few months, five years ago. Five years later, we're here and uh, basically in this last month or so, we've really been ramping up and our goal, try to launch this year hopefully in August. We've done a lot of feature development and refinement, finding bugs and uh, little aesthetic tweaks. Now we're in the migration stage where we're thinking about how to get the content over. Uh, so this project, I would say, is fairly mature. There could be some really big oversights that we're missing. That's why particularly we're trying to get a, be able to get all the content in and see how the site performs and do a really good audit of, on the new site to make sure things are looking correct. We're not losing data, going across that threshold, and see how close we can get to our, our goal launching this year, mid-summer. All right, this has been another live code hangout, web development with Django and Wagtail CMS. If you'd like to check out the work I'm currently performing for where I'm currently working. You can check out pull request number 616. I hope to have this one wrapped up within the next day or so. Uh, there's only some, I think mainly just to test the importer now. Make sure there's not any obvious bugs. Well, thanks for checking out the stream. Hope you're doing well and have a great day.